It is a nightly ritual for you, sitting on the balcony in the warm enveloping air, feet crossed on the railing, pencil moving delicately across the pages of your sketch pad. Occasionally you glance up at the scene before you and snap what you deem important details into memory before taking another drag of your cigarette and exhaling a slate gray cloud into the darkness. The whisper of lead on paper as you translate these impressions is no louder than the starless night, nor the insects and tree frogs that forage and chirp and croak so quietly as if not to disturb your work. When you look up again, a ragged man stands motionless beyond, a stoic, irregular shape in the darkness. You consider excluding him from the sketch, but decide this would be deceptive to the realism you're trying to capture. So you integrate him into the background this dark, harrowed man whom slumps so peculiarly. Glancing again, you find the man motionless still, but now somewhat further away. You move your pencil in a hurry to solidify his existence into your art, but the more you attempt to add detail, the more he becomes nothing but a darkly shadowed smear on paper. Each time you draw your eyes away from him to the page, the further he has moved when you affix them again. Your heart races faster as this fight to capture him ensues. The muted night is broken by a deep, rolling thunder that makes you lurch in your chair. You take a long drag of your cigarette, but it does nothing to impede your shaking hands. The heavens split open and heavy, slanted rain comes down on the distant harrowed man. You struggle to capture him before he disappears, your body falling into nervous convulsions of anticipation and fear. The rain pelts the ground with a repetitious patter, in time with the toe caps of your boots tapping together. The sound of lead on paper grows louder than the thunder. So loud you can already feel something thick and wet trickle from your ears, but you ignore it and continue drawing because that is all you can do now in this thunderous deafness. Even if your pencil is ripping through the page as the dark, shadowed smear grows across the sketch until it takes up all the white space, and the pencil breaks so your thighs beyond tear like nylon in great crimson strokes, and your eyes stream with tears when you realize how badly you want to go back inside but no, you never will. And still, the harrowed man has moved further away each time you bear to look. So obscured is he in the sheeting rain, all you can see is the wilted ghost of his irregular shape. Until he is so far away, he is now close enough to reach through your sketch and crush your throat with putrescent hands.